getting to hope and faith. Early on, the politicians learned that creating hope is the easiest way to get votes. Promises are sworn to, babies are kissed, and patriotic platitudes are strewn from one end of the platform to the other. Once victory is assured, the backroom dealing begins, and before anyone realizes it, the promises are broken, the babies are sold, and the platitudes become cynical remarks about the realities of life. Hope is one of the most abused of emotions, and yet one of the most tenaciously held by most humans. In fact, a life without hope describes a slow descent into nihilism and early death. Hope is the secret sauce that keeps people going during difficult times and has been abused by the power mongers who know a hopeless society will endure much more crime and corruption. Hope arises from the belief in the benevolent other, the merciful God, the championing superhero, or even the belief in goodness itself. The problem with the way we think about hope is that it exists because of a force or power outside of ourselves. There becomes a disconnect between our personal power and what we perceive. We hope for a better world and then forget that the better world we seek is a result of how we are being. This sort of causative amnesia is part of our cultural training and our socializing indoctrination. We are taught that our ability to change the world depends on other people, institutions, governments, and the goodwill of God. We are tamped down into a tiny box of self-enforced permissions so as to fit in and go along to get along as a sort of virtue signaling to the world at large that we are not a threat. The pathetic thing about this is that it is not we who are the threat to each other. We are a threat to the controllers. If we somehow break out of our tiny boxes, compare notes with other tiny box fugitives, band together and take organized action against our social programming, the power brokers start making plans to re-lock down and re-incarcerate these matrix breakers who are so full of hope. They must remove that hope, stomp out any confidence, and destroy any self-esteem. And this is the vulnerability of hope. Because it arises from a belief in a savior or higher force outside of our personal power, all the controllers need to do is erode that belief by propagandizing insurmountable odds against an all-powerful enemy. Pandemics are good for this. Organized crime is good for this. Climate change is good for this. Anything that puts an existential imminent threat front and center makes hope seem, well, hopeless. I would like to offer a more non-dualistic quantum way of looking at hope. Step zero is acknowledging that life is good. Then fear becomes a non-factor. Remember the old saw, F-E-A-R stands for false evidence appearing real. When there is fake news from fake experts all talking about death and destruction, it's obvious they don't want you to get the idea that life is good. Thus, you know they're lying in order to control your thoughts and feelings. It then follows that by accepting the premise that life is good, remember that you are life. And so all you are and everything that happens as a result of who you are is good. The particles and waves that make up your life are animated by what and how you are being, so by being the living embodiment of hope and goodness, those particles and waves reflect that back to you. Hope must become more like faith. Faith knows the outcomes are good. Faith allows for evil and dark forces to transform into light and love. Faith sees all life as reaching higher and better states of being. This is how the certainty of faith and the promise of hope can transform the world. Darkness cannot exist without light, and faith and hope proclaim that eventually, and certainly, all darkness turns into light. This is the promise of life itself, reflected in the certainty of faith. By being and acting in hope and faith, 
all people automatically come together and in that union create a greater, higher world, a world without darkness and uncertainty, a world without fear and threats, a world expressing the highest and best humanity can be, a world radiating that goodness to all beings everywhere in the cosmos and beyond, united in love and light. That is the promise. That is the hope. That is reality. You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy Rx. www.pureenergyrx.com.